Hey guys, here at the uh, Concourse of Elegance at Hampton Court, it's not just about old vehicles, we have brand new vehicles and this here is a prototype of a new vehicle that will be coming out next year, probably the year after, 2022, and it is essentially, as you can see, the spiritual successor to the Land Rover Defender. That's what this vehicle effectively is and you can see that from the looks of it. It's still in development, it's still being worked on, very exciting. I'm going to talk to a couple of people here who are going to walk me around the car and tell me a little bit more about it. So this is the new Ineos. It's what people say would be the modern version of the uh, Land Rover Defender, if Land Rover had got it right. So this is the car that's being having its public debut here at the Concourse of Elegance at Hampton Court. And I'm here with a couple of people from Ineos who are going to talk me through the vehicle and point out its various features and stuff. Guys, it's great to see the car for real. Uh, this is a fully working prototype, is it? Yes, that's right. That's right, it's a, it's a petrol version of the, as you know, well, probably know we have two versions, the diesel and the petrol. Um, this, in this case, it's the petrol full, full working. Uh, it's basically a chassis and then the body we, we build for, for this van. Uh, so unfortunately, we cannot yet fly, uh, disclose or show the interior, but that, that was going to come later on. So is this a, com let's walk around this way so we can see more of the car. Is this a completely bespoke design? Is this, what is, what is the chassis based on or is it completely new and unique? So the, the strategy has always been, and the, the idea behind Grenadier, uh, that techni um, the technical, so the technical capabilities lead the design. Uh, so that was the, the main uh, idea behind on, on, on which Toby bases his design. So as you can see, we have here the different models, the history of the 4x4. We have here the the Willys, the, the Land Cruiser, and also the G-Wagon, the Mercedes-Benz. Uh, and we see that this is kind of uh, the following that succession of, of 4x4 cars uh, that everybody I mean, in the market is, is pretty well known. And what's been the reception like for this car, particularly the now the first time you've actually shown it to people and met people you know, in the flesh? How have people responded it, it to it? It has been really good. Uh, thanks. It's, it's really, really good. Uh, people like it. Uh, they are always <laughs> wanting to, to hear more about it. Uh, but uh, as you, we are just starting the, now the, the series of, of testing of the car, so we are disclosing information as, as, as in the so in the let's say in a reasonable ways in, in order not to disclose perhaps something that they well, you want to tease, you want to tease people a little bit right so but one of the reasons i understand that you showed off the car so early was so that you could do that testing you could do it undisguised around the world are you going to be That's testing right. this in the middle east as well yeah That's absolutely i mean the plan is to test this all around the world uh hot cold climates everywhere tough obviously we get later into sort of our 4x4 four four testing. At the moment we've completed our winter testing which was done in Sweden earlier this year uh, you know really dropping the temperatures down to you know minus 26 and making sure that you know the engine fires up and all that sort of stuff but as we develop the car further and go through we'll start taking on more and more of the different terrains and in the different you know, we're going Australia South Africa uh, Spain you know all these all these different places to make sure it's durable and capable in all these conditions so yeah all around the world 1.8 million kilometers of testing uh, that's over to be the next done. couple of years or yeah we'll we'll still be as we go up to sort of our build we'll still be developing and, and you know, working through what we want to do and making adjustments to you know body or clearance or whatever as we go through because we might find something um, and that gives us a great opportunity to to you know evolve the car as it goes through but what's great is that you know now you can see the first prototype actually in in the body um, we aren't going to put any more camouflage on any of the cars so when you see them out around the world that's the great idea testing. Are, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And what's the rollout plan? Let's walk around the, towards the back of the car. What's the rollout plan of, of the car? What are we looking at in terms of when people can get their hand on these? Well, at the moment, obviously, we are still going through the prototype stage. It will be pretty much into, um, we'll have our full working prototype. So we'll have the prototype with the interior as well as the exterior, sort of around about mid uh, next year and then obviously the vehicle will continue to uh, develop 
So we were thinking it will be in 22 that you'll be able to get your hands on them. Uh, so yeah, around about that sort of time period. Um, but you never know what happens. And we, we, we're listening to a lot of people. We're talking to a lot of people. A lot of our content that we're putting out there is very much open for everyone to see how we're developing the car. And what's great is actually we're using people's feedback to actually influence decisions as we go forward. And what you can see with the Grenadier is a very much like an open source vehicle. You'll be able to attach so many different things to it. I was going to ask, we're looking at this aspect of the car here and we've got these kind of slots that run along the side of the body and into the door and also at the bottom of the door. What, what's the thinking behind those? Yes, yeah, so we call them utility rails. Um, the idea is to provide a blank canvas for the customers to customize it in the way they, they would like to. Um, here we are also we are working to develop a, a quite a broad, broad range of accessories that would fit in here. So, for example, something common that customers do in this kind of uh, you, for this kind of cars is fitting something on, on on this the rear panel to perhaps hang the the recovery trucks or some tools, shovels, uh, axes for, for the off-roading. So that would be an ideal. Uh, uh, for example, an, an example of what this would be for. And here we also have um, an external storage box. So this, this lid here you see would open uh, and that's uh, you have access to to a power take there. Um, and it's, it's, it's ideal, it would be ideal to, to storage for some more equipment that you don't want to keep inside the car because it's uh, dirty or uh, <laughs> different reasons customers would find. Fantastic, so a lot of thought, a lot of effort going into this car, a lot of development, we're really looking forward to trying it in the metal someday soon. Uh, wish you the best of luck with this. It's getting a great reception. A lot of people are interested in it. Thanks so much for talking to us today. So here on the Ineos stand, uh, they also have a heritage lineup of 4x4s, including an original uh, Jeep. Uh, this is, I think it's a 1950s one, but look at the evolution of Jeep. Look how tiny that thing is compared to a modern uh, Jeep uh, Wrangler. That is an incredible thing. And um, it's got, it's full military spec because it's got the Bays and everything on it check it out now how raw and basic is that check that out but i know what you guys want to see especially my followers in the middle east you want to check out this 1980 toyota fj40 and it is beautifully restored absolutely pristine this this is absolutely gorgeous this thing this of course is the darling of the desert if you like and it's in the right color as well sort of safari brown uh absolutely beautiful um this owned by Ineos as well, manufactured in 1980, uh, restored in Japan. So there you go. That's about as original as you can get. And next to it, Sheikh Mohammed's favorite car uh, of Dubai. Uh, it's a G-Wagon, but this is not his favorite spec. This is blue, quite utilitarian. Uh, it's got bent seat in the back. And this particular car, which is pretty much ready to rock, as you can see, even got a winch on the front, is actually for sale. So if you're interested, that one is for sale. And there it is on the Ineos stand display next to the uh, new Ineos that we've just been looking at.